Welcome back to the channel, I'm Ben. There's a question that's been buzzing in my head for two days or even more considering that often PlayStation games reviews have always come out a few days before the game's release. Take the recent Synapse, for example. I received the game key in the first half of June, the embargo was lifting on June 29th and the game was released on July 4th. I could get many more examples, but you get the point. Where the hell are the reviews for Firewall Ultra? No one has received a key for this game. A tactical shooter developed by First Contact Entertainment and it's the sequel to Firewall Zero Hour. Sequel in every sense, because not only is the second chapter, but Ultra is set in the same locations so much that a good part of the maps are the same, but with a few small modifications and five years later. August 24th is the release date for Firewall Ultra, a game that has been kept extremely secret until hands-on play. In fact, about this game, we've only been shown trailers that are 90% CGI scenes, and these has raised the doubts for me from the start. But let's immediately describe what I'm seeing around thanks to various channels that started streaming the game upon its release. For those who haven't had the chance to see any gameplay yet, fortunately Firewall Ultra doesn't look as bad as it was shown in a leaked screenshot a few days before its release, meaning ugly. In that screenshot you can see a game that's strong resembled the early Quest 2 games, blurry texture and low poly models. I myself didn't believe that was the final look of the game and was convinced that Firewall Ultra will be, at least graphically, a well done job. Fortunately, I was right, but at the same time, we can exactly say that we are facing a game that aligns with the standards of modern games. The graphics department looks slightly better than Zero Hour, but there's no obvious lead for war, and it seems like a PS4 game. However, this is not Firewall Ultra's main problem. Oh no. If only it were. In light of passable graphic, everything else suggests an unfinished work, but mostly important, we are not facing the tactical shooter one would expect, knowing Zero Hour. From the gameplay, they seem like two different games. Ultra presents itself to the public with a simplified mode that features so many wrong mechanics that it makes me think the developers were thinking of a flat VR hybrid, one of those games that you can play with the headset on, holding the controller. In fact, just like in many games on PSVR, the gameplay mechanics doesn't seem to be designed for a VR game, but for a flat game to which VR support was then added. Weapons are glue it to your hand, there's no two-handed grip on pistols, you switch from one weapon to another by pressing a button on the controller, the same goes for opening doors, click, weapons reload automatically and the character in-game performs the reloading animation, something that kills player immersion in a VR game. I could understand this mechanic in Zero Hour, where the controllers were restricted by the support like a gun stock, so since you couldn't remove them, the only solution was automatic reloading. But in Ultra, where your hands are free, why can't I reload manual? Speaking of animation, do we want to talk about the one when you switch to the knife? Really poorly done. But what left me more perplexed about using various weapons was the grenade throw. You equip the grenade, press button to visualize the trajectory of the throw and upon releasing the button the grenade is shot from your hand following the perfect parabola why it's a vr game i want to be the one throwing the damn grenade i want holster on my body i want to store the weapon somewhere on my body since if i look down i can see it What's the point of having a full body if I can't use to holster weapons? I want to open doors with my hands, I don't want to press a button to do it, I want to physically crouch down, I'm in a supposedly room scale game, so why do I have to press a button to crouch? And that's not all, because now I'm gonna tell you about other absurdities in this game, I've seen players running around shooting hundreds of rounds with the weapons at their 
chest or to the side, meaning without aiming. This is because in Firewall Ultra, the aim is assisted, but not only that. Those times when you want a bit more realism and want to aim with your own eyes allow you to do two things. One thing that doesn't happen in reality and one thing that doesn't simply do not exist. The thing that doesn't happen is that you can close one eye to aim through the sight and optics. Guys, this is something you only see in movies, it's impractical, you have to aim with both eyes open. And as if that wasn't enough, closing one eye allow you to zoom in? What the hell, do you have bionic eyes? I get that you want to create the sensation of focusing on the target, but we are in VR, our brains are already creating the tunnel effect on the target. And in any case, if you really want to create this effect, don't make it start almost a second later. Conclude talking about the AI. Embarrassing. Enemies walk back and forth on short path and when they see you, a couple of things can happen. They open fire on you but stay in one place. They doesn't see cover, they just stand there motionless, generously inviting bullets. Or the enemy charges straight to you, shooting until you drop them. And they are responsive as a sloth. You might open a door, find an enemy and take your time because it takes quite a while before they turn towards you and start shooting. This might be due to setting a low difficulty level, but in all the gameplay I've seen so far, the story is always the same. I conclude with my opinion based on tracing the development of Firewall Ultra. And here's what came out. About 5 years ago, First Contact Entertainment releases a final content pack for Zero Hour and also announced that they won't support the game anymore, no more contents, no resolving potential issues or bugs. Zero Hours was literally abandoned by its creators. It's the end of an era. In the firewall community, discussions immediately start about the possible development of a second installment, but PSVR 2 wasn't talking about yet. So, a follow-up for PSVR 2 is still off. About a year later, the first rumors about PSVR 2 start to appear and nothing more is heard about the new firewall for quite a while. After a little over a year, talk about firewall and its likely arrival on PSVR 2 research faces. In short, about 5 years will pass, and in the meantime, PSVR 2 has been released on the market, and Firewall Ultra is announced for the end of 2023 or the beginning of 2024. And since the release of PSVR 2, we've been show nothing but very short CGI trailers, there's talk of two modes upon the game's release, a simplified one for novice users and the Ultra mode, with manual reloading, no assisted aiming, no HUD, and other features befitting a good hardcore tactical shooter. In June, something changes. Still no real gameplay of the game as shown, but its release is anticipated for the end of August. But only in the simplified mode. The Ultra mode is postponed to the end of the year or the beginning of 2024, exactly when the full game was supposed to be released. Putting all the pieces together, I thought, Firewall Ultra seems like a VR flat hybrid, one of those games that you could very well play wearing the headset but with a controller in hand. Its mechanics are too flat game and for a VR game there are too many actions that have to be performed by pressing a button instead of being done with your hands. Could it be that the game was being developed for PSVR, a headset that didn't utilize room scale but required you to be in front of a camera for tracking? And is it that shortly after, the developers modified the ongoing project trying to adapt the game to the new headset but by then some mechanics were designed for the old one and therefore it cost too much time and money to completely readapt it? And so, is it possible that first Contact Entertainment rushed the game's release without showing gameplay and reviews to earn some money and cover the cost or 
part of them to complete the development of the game with the Ultra Mode? Obviously, these are just questions that I'm pondering and they're probably not an answer. But let me know in the comments what you think. An opinion on the game? I haven't played it, but based on a few hours of gameplay I've seen in recent days, I'm very disappointed in what was supposed to be the one of the flagship games of PSVR 2, given the success of the previous chapter. All I know is that something's off. No real gameplay shown before the release, no early keys, no even to the biggest international channels. And considering Sony's refounds policies, it was truly unfair not to provide a basis for evaluation to the audience to decide whether to buy the game or not. In fact, among the comments of these live streams I followed, there were so many disappointed players who, in addition to complaining about the things I've just mentioned in this video, complained about being forced to buy the game without actually having seen it, and many of them having not yet launched it for the first time and therefore being able to request a refund, that's why they'd say they wanted to do upon seeing these gameplays. What can I say? Developers misjudgments, the day things surprising the players by keeping almost everything hidden will work, or was there actually some malicious intent in what they were doing? We can't know and, at the moment, I discourage the purchase of Firewall Ultra and suggest waiting until the release of the Ultra mode, expected by the end of 2023 or the beginning of 2024. Thanks for watching the full video, like, subscribe and keep following. Support the channel by using the super thanks button. That's all from them. See you next time and see you in VR.